Uh, you both get 60 seconds now to fight for your particular corner and make your case. Andrew, I'm going to start with you. Are the Tories a nasty party? Well, I wouldn't class myself as a Tory. I think it's a pejorative term in a lot of the Midlands and the North. I, I'm a Conservative. I joined the Conservative Party in 1983 when I was at the University at Nottingham. I wouldn't have joined the Conservative Party if it was the nasty party. We are the, the party of government. Tough decisions have to be made. And you can't make any decision without upsetting someone. But we are a one-nation Conservative Party. We're not the divisive politics of the Labour Party, which is, you know, for, for the many and not the few. Well, they'll decide who the few are. And you might be one of them, in which case you better watch out. I've never called my political opponents uh, scum at any stage of my political career. And, and I've got a lot of time for Stephen Pound. He's a great old Labour MP driven out of Parliament by the Corbynistas at the last election. Oh, there you go. Well, you were within your 60 seconds. <laughs> well, look, Stephen, you know what to do now. You, you've got 60 seconds starting now. Is the Tory party the nasty party? Look, here's, here's the odd thing. There's some very nasty people in the Labour Party, no question about that. But the Labour Party's overall principles are very, very nice. The Tories are the other way around. There's some very nice people in there, including, you know, one or two people in North West Leicestershire. Excellent people. But their overall philosophy, their ethos, what it means to be a Tory is very, very nasty. Look, in a nutshell, Labour believes that this country cannot be a good place for any one of us to live in unless it's a good place for every one of us to live in. The Tories believe in individual achievement. They've been this sort of cutthroat economics. They believe in climbing the ladder above somebody. So the Tory party is about the individual succeeding. And the corollary of that is that other individuals lose. They can talk about levelling up. I'm sorry. As far as I'm concerned, to be a Tory means the individual levels up. But underneath that person is a whole raft of people who are suffering. We believe in a good country for every single person. We believe in the collective, not just the individual. We, you were bang on. Bang, bang on, on your 60 he's, he's seconds. He's got a little egg timer. He's there, got an egg timer. Sure. Uh, later. <laughs> you, can't, you can't teach that, Stephen. You can't teach that. Right, which one are you going to take aim at first? Well, I think I'm going to take aim at Stephen there with what he said there because uh, a lot of the policies that the Tory party have actually put together are things that would be out of the Labour Party playbook, I would say. So I kind of feel that the Tories aren't actually being that nasty and they're being quite nice, really. They're looking for uh, wages, uh, higher wages for all, really, aren't they? Rishi Sunak mm. was very, mm. very, very uh, direct with that instead of cheap labour from Europe. I don't know, it's difficult to say, but... I think on balance, really, Andrew swung it for me. OK, all right. Well, that's, that's, that's good stuff. But we have to now get stuck into the wider debate. So you mm. jumped straight to the conclusion. Oh, did I? Sorry. Sorry about <laughs> that's that. That's absolutely fine. I couldn't help it. I couldn't help it. I, I might change my mind, though. Yeah, well, this is you go, right? I'm, very... <laughs> I'm going to give you the chance now. Change Nana's mind. Change the... She's normally a perfect... Riff. She normally holds a mirror up to the nation. So I, I'm sure you'd change, uh, you'd change everyone's minds if you can. Look, I... I mean, the Labour Party... Well, I, I have to say, um, uh, to you're not it? the first woman to be won over by Andrew Bridgen, um, sadly, but... <laughs> the, the... <laughs> no, no, no I, mean that, I mean that politically, obviously. You know, what not. other way could I possibly mean it? Uh, but look, when you've got a Tory party, that actually talks about pushing back immigrant votes, people who are desperate to leave their home country, trying to get to this country. And instead of addressing the issue of immigration in a sensible way, at the source, actually looking at why people are coming here, at the, at the push factor rather than the pull factor, you know, the idea that you can actually have a Home Secretary talking about shoving people backwards in boats when they're obviously they're just going to jump up. There's things like that. But ultimately, you can talk about the individual cases and, you know, I was going to say till you're blue in the face or till you're red in the face, makes no difference. But ultimately, to be a Conservative means that you succeed at the cost of someone else. To be Labour means we all succeed. We, every one of us, we're all in this together to coin a hackneyed phrase. Mm, OK, Andrew, you're going to come, come back to that then? You're obviously, as far as... As far as no, I, I, yeah. no yeah. clearly. I mean, I, I believe that a, a rising economic tide lifts, lifts all boats. Um, we're in a situation where the tax burden has never been higher in this country post-Covid, yeah. and the top 1% of earners are paying... 29% of all the taxes, and um, that's a uh, considerable burden upon them, and that is, is, is releasing that, that tax burden uh, from those at the poorest end of, end of our society. Uh, at the end of the day, Stephen's idea of, uh, of equality is, is, in my view, in practice around the world, and we've seen it so many times with socialism, uh, is, is not levelling up. It's lowest common denominator and levelling down, unfortunately. And if Stephen can, t can tell me any country in the world where socialist policies have ever worked, he might even convert me. OK, 
Finland, Sweden, Lithuania, <laughs> social democracy works. Social democracy... When uh, not so, together, but not socialism. Would you rather not live in Finland or Hungary at the present time? Would you rather live in an, an economy which is all about cutting taxes, or would you, would you rather live in a society where paying tax is a membership card of that society? If you're in the club, you pay your membership subs. I'm a citizen of this country. I pay my tax. I want my tax to be there, not just for me, but for other people, so that the health service is there, so that police, education, the environment are all protected. I want us all to be in. I don't want to live in a world where we pay virtually no tax and we provide our own think, little think, societies around us. Well, it. I think Look, Andrew would probably the agree with you. of conservatism for me just... is the gated communities I see in my part of the world. These are small groups of the super rich, surrounded by security guards, surrounded by fences, living in their own little world. Well, I'm sorry. I don't want a world of gated communities. I want a world of open communities mm. where everybody has the chance, everybody has the safety net, everybody has the support. Yeah, okay. And if that means it's all paying a little bit more tax, then frankly, so be it. I'd quite like to see Amazon and a few of the other people pay a bit too. Well, yeah. we all would. We all would, actually. Andrew, 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 Andrew is a sort of I, I, I don't, I don't, He started with very little... Let, let, let Andrew, Andrew come back in. Andrew, let's let Andrew come in. Let Andrew come back in. I, I miss Stephen a lot, to be honest, in, in Parliament. He's, he's a great orator, as we're finding out today. He's got it saved up for me. Um, yes, taxes have got to be pitched to the right level, but I'm a, a believer in the Laffer curve. If you make taxes too high, you actually destroy your own tax base, as well as punishing success. I want to reward success. We should crack down on the tax evaders and the avoiders. Uh, absolutely, they are cheating the system. I, indeed, I raised a question only two weeks ago, uh, with the Secretary of State for Business, Kwasi Kwarteng, about how we could crack down on corporate tax evasion, and I'll be meeting with him to do that. But ultimately, right, look, I also see sorry, that the government sorry, doesn't sorry. spend people's money well, and I think we leave right. more money with, for people to spend. That, that gives them more freedom, because okay. not having any money is, is not about being poor. It's about a, a dearth of choices, and that's what wealth gives you. It doesn't buy you friends' happiness or health. It buys you choices, and poor people... They have no choices, and I want to give them more choices in their life. OK, I understand that. Let's just get back right with the specific focus of the nasty party element of it now. And I'd just like a quick one to each of you, because we're a bit pressed for time. Andrew, you know, when it looks like we can't feed some of Marcus Rashford's hungry children, you know, that does look a bit nasty. Well, it's, it's, it's the look and the, and the tough decision. Ultimately, I think, and I'm a parent myself, the greatest pride I have is going out and... and bringing home money to feed my own children. And I think to take that away, uh, that, that responsibility and, and that source of pride away from, from individuals is a difficult balancing act against those who can't provide for their children. It's about targeting the help to those who are in genuine need, not, not blanket uh, support across the whole of, and basically infantilising our own nation. Mm, I was going to just mention the £20 that's taken, yeah. taken away for universal credit. I just, you know, a lot of people might think that's quite nasty. Potentially, potentially. I've, well. I've, got, I've, got on the, I've gone on the record and said I think it's immoral and politically impossible. I think the government will actually change the taper to allow those who are in work uh, to retain another £20. And for those who can't work, we need to keep the £20 in place. We're heading for a time of high inflation. It, it can't happen. OK, all, all right. Stephen, last one to you now then. Persistent claims of anti-Semitism within the party. I think uh, 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 an unrelenting cancel culture and a deputy leader who thinks all Tories are scum. Labour's pretty nasty, aren't they? <laughs> well, OK, to take the one up, I mean, I think hopefully the, 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 the nightmare beast, the horror of anti-Semitism has been buried. I think we're pretty clear where we are now. Um, the Labour Party has said to a number of people who hold profound disgusting anti-Semitic views, there is no place for you in this party. They're out, they're complaining, they're whinging, they're screaming from the sidelines, but so be it, they're, they're, they're out of it. Uh, as for Angela Rayner's comments, you know, Angela spoke from the heart, but she didn't speak from my heart. Um, no. And I don't think she spoke from the heart of many Labour people. I think she probably regrets it. Uh, I think doesn't. people always <laughs> say no, no, that they're tired of bland, faceless totally. politicians. As soon as somebody shows a little bit of personality, a bit of character, you come down on them like a ton of bricks. You can, we can have a beige politics, by all means, or mm -hmm. we can have the occasional person like Angela Rayner, who may set your teeth on edge, but at least she gets your attention. <laughs> <laughs> Both of you, brilliant. I, 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 would, I, I would come back and just, and just say, Very bear in mind that Keith Fuzz is still a member of the Labour Party. If he'd been a Conservative... I he, knew you'd His, feet, right. would not have, would not have, his feet would not have touched the ground as he left the building.